and welcome to the LTU show. I'm Henry. And I'm Malika. And in the week that Doctor Who was announced, we'll be doing a bit of time travelling ourselves. Yes. Congratulations to Shuti Gatwa. What a fantastic choice. Of course, that show was a real vintage one. And on our show today, we'll be talking all things indeed, retro. Indeed, indeed we will. Yes, coming up, our reporters have been out and about in Leeds, indulging in some retail therapy in some of the city's best vintage clothes shops. We've also been to a collector's event, talking to gamers and comic enthusiasts. And we've been browsing the shelves in a vinyl store, finding out why records are so popular with the younger generation. But first, we'd better explain for anyone who doesn't know, what exactly is retro? We've been getting some thoughts on that. So to me, retro just means like, a lot of fun. But retro to me is like anything around the 70s, 60s maybe. Well, when I think of retro, I kind of mostly think of like movies, particularly like horror films. Yeah, retro music takes me back to like 60s plus, you know, I do enjoy that kind of music anyway. The thing that comes to my mind is like gaming, like Nintendo Q. I think retro to me is all the, the best parts of the past. Like old films, old music. Stuff like that. Jurassic Park and Star Wars and also like fashion as well and music. The, the music that your dad shows you when you're young. All the old games in like the 80s. Films that you grow up loving uh, that you that get, kind of gets passed down onto you. Fashion probably like 90s, 80s wise. I sometimes like to mix retro and streetwear. Especially like classics like um, Halloween, Freddy the 13th, even like Suspiria. And films like that is just something um, really cool about like all kind of retro horror films and all like because most of them use practical effects it looks incredible a lot of the time there you go that's what they think and after hearing all that we can't really stay dressed like this for a retro show now can we it wouldn't be right would it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be <laughs> it's a good job we've got our fashion expert john joe here with us who's now going to show us the ins and out of retro fashion Hi guys, yes, get yourselves over here. I've got lots of options on my rail from every decade and get you properly kitted out. Awesome, let's see what he's got for us. Hello there. Hi, hi guys. So, well good, thank you. What have you got for us today then? All right, Henry, let's start with you. So we're going for like a 70s, hippie rock, mm. Woodstock kind of vibe. Mm. Like Short it. festival. Cool All festival. right, very let's, chill, very chill. let's start with your head. We've got a bandana here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've got a ban bandana here. Very vibrant, red. Yeah, very in, in that area, it was all about the co colours. Greens, orange, reds, mm. blues. Mm. So, got a nice red one. We got very this nice. from a charity shop, but it was actually originally from Disneyland. Disney? Yeah, so. Oh, that's going to be pricey. <laughs> that's going to be expensive. Rare. That's, uh, Take care of it now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's move on to your shirt. Right. Just a pl plain white shirt. Uh -huh. You can get it, yeah. you can get these anywhere, <laughs> any <laughs> any online okay. shop. Or this one's from Sainsbury's, so any supermarket sells them as right. well. So it's <laughs> okay. So get your shirt from Asda now. It's cheap. It's cheap. Cheap. Good quality. This is a staple. Oh, it's cold. Oh, One oh, second. Zangle, right. zangle, okay. they zangle. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is a staple yeah. to your outfit. It's a, bit, a pair, pair of nice oversized blue jeans from Jada London. Like... These were from, uh, they're from Jada London. That's a designer, but right. we got them from Urban Outfitters. Okay, okay, yeah. You know, nice I've got, I got lots of trance into this. Very vibey. For a second. Yeah, they're hypnotic. Yeah, very, very mm. hypnotic. Giving straight got, hippie vibes. For your, for yeah. your hi hippie vibes, well, I've gone for the double denim, really in at the time. Right. This is like a bleached one. It's from yeah. a ASOS, but it's a, from a, a brand that is vegan friendly. It's unisex. Oh. A lot of it's like recycled materials. Okay, so like collusion is all about yes. like helping it's the, the environment and things like that. And it's cheap. It's because it's all reusable. It's all cheap. Okay, so win win basically. Yeah. Here you go. Okay, cool. you look sick already. I like it. I like it. <laughs> What's saving the, saving the planet while wearing it? Saving the planet while wearing it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, now we'll move on to Malika's outfit. Yeah. For you, we've gone for like the '90s R&B, mm. Destiny's Child, mm. parties, raves. A bit of a Leah, a little bit of a Shanti. This entire outfit 
is from ASOS and Boohoo. Okay. Our, the, we'll start off with accessories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is a little pouch with rings, about four or five in there. All blingy. Gotta love it. Okay, a little bit. Bit shiny, bit shiny. Yeah, bit shiny. Got, got you a pair of glasses nice. for your parties and raves. It's virus, man. These are the, uh, move on to the last two accessories. Got some bit, big earrings. They're massive. Big big they, are, they are massive. The bigger, the better. <laughs> There's a joke there, but I'm not allowed to say it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll just finish it off with a minimal chain. Mm. Not too much. Don't need anything Blend more in your face. Yeah. Can see, can see that you you don't need to, uh, much yeah. to do with your hair. So we just got a little thing, got a nice little bandana. Mm. You don't want to ruin your hair, yeah, do you? Just to minimise it a little bit. So got you just a, pl a plain black crop top mm -hmm. because in the parties you could get a bit too hot. Right, you right. You need something on though to cover yourself up. <laughs> The, old jump. the 90s was all all about layering, so this is a first bottom layer. Yeah. Just a nice comfy pair of shorts. Yeah. Very helpful for like when I wanna, mm -hmm. if jump. I get hot and stuff. Why is it always jumping? It's right, isn't it? <laughs> raves are jumping. I don't know, jump at raves. <laughs> then right. we've got a pair of just black pants, oversized. Yeah. Can wear these anywhere, mm, really. Supermarket. Just supermarket. Uni yeah. parties, yeah, in my living room, in your living room, watching a film when I'm in bed crying. Mackies. Oh, no, that's sad. That's sad. <laughs> that's really sad. <laughs> All right, and to just to finish this outfit off, right, is just a nice overshirt. It's my mesh material, really thin, mm -hmm. great, quite for, breezy. Quite breezy. You can wear this, however, buttoned up, mm -hmm. loose, tied, whatever you want with so it. Multi purpose, very multi purpose. Right, All right, thank you. Mm, it's definitely my color. Well, with a bit of TV magic, we're just going to quickly get changed into these. Very nice. Can't, mm, can't beat a bit of TV magic. Look at my oh. ice. Ice? Ice? You guys are looking fresh. Dun, 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 Thank you, though. Oh, yeah. Well, like, thank you for letting me do this to you. You guys yeah. are... Yeah. We're we're looking good. We're good. clean now. Yeah, exactly. That's what we're I was we thinking. we not before. Nah. You were boring I'm off, before. I'm off to a festival. Yeah, okay. I'll leave this to you. I don't want to hear it. You look it. like you've been zapped from the past. Drinks. Don't want to hear it. We're fine. We look good. We look now you flashy. You look, you look amazing now. You're fabulous now. You look like you fit the part. Yeah, yeah that's retro, true. Two different eras mashed right. together. Right. look like you're straight from the past. Oh, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Yeah, thank it's you, John Joe. Nice, thank you, man. Thank you. I definitely feel the part. I definitely feel more retro now. And mm. look at you. I really love your rock kind of vibe. I'm off to go watch me some Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> and our reporter, Elliot, has been out and taking a look at how the trend is booming in Leeds. In recent years, the secondhand clothing market has skyrocketed resulting in various shops selling retro clothes for all ages. One of these thriving boutiques is Blue Rinse in Leeds city centre. I went there to find out more about this new world of fashion. Firstly, I was curious about the usual demographic of customers hunting for retro clothes. We get a lot of teenagers because we do remade stuff, so we take either something that's not selling too well or something that's damaged and we repurpose it into like crop tops and things like that yeah so that brings in like the younger the younger audience and then yeah and anybody upwards of that we get a lot of costume designers as well in who are doing things for film and uh, production so they'll be wanting to find period specific clothing from that era so yeah we do get a lot of that as well um, but anyone and everyone really. <laughs> I was interested to see if wearing vintage clothes acts as a gateway for younger people to discover the style of older generations. I think it's more, it's strange because I feel like at the minute you see people appreciating more like the like 90s and 2000s. So to me, like that doesn't really seem that far away like compared to like 60s and 70s and stuff. But um, I think it definitely does, but I think it more makes people appreciate sustainability and like rewearing and not purchasing new things. But um, yeah, I feel like it, it does bring some kind of appreciation for um, all the decades just because that's what they're taking their inspiration from for their own style. 
Speaking with an employee that works at a vintage boutique, I had to ask about her own style. It's a bit all over the place really, but it's mostly just sort of inspired by 60s, 70s, early 80s, like British subculture style really. Um, but yeah, mostly like British um, music inspired. <laughs> it seems that the world of vintage clothing is here to stay allowing a younger generation to discover and appreciate the culture of past decades. Good, very interesting. You got a favourite era of fashion, Malika? Um, I'd have to say 90s, definitely baggy, bright, a little bit of a Leo, mm. you know, things like yeah. that. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> Red, jump, jump. No jump. jumps. No jumps. Why no, no jumps? jumps? Because you don't jump out of rays. You do. No, you don't. Yes, you do. I don't. I do. Oh, I don't Watch know bit. what I don't know what race you go to, but I don't drop out race. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm liking mine. It's pretty psychedelic. It's very cool. Mm. I feel like I can go fit in at Woodstock right now. To be honest, that'd be awesome, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, as as well as the fashion scene, modern mainstream media is also dominated by the retro vibe. We are indeed talking about the world of comic books and gaming. Now more than ever before, characters that were invented six decades ago dominate the box office. Like the Doctor Strange movie released last week. And it feels like every week there's a new instalment in a gaming franchise concocted in the 80s. So our reporter Emmy went out and about in Leeds to explore the origins of these hobbies. We started in OK Comics in the Thorntons Arcade. We talked to Jared, the owner of the store, who wanted to know what kick-started his love of the comic book media. I've read comics all my life. Um, I, I started reading comics as a, as a little kid um, and I yeah, just kind of learned to read, reading comics. And then when I sort of started earning my own money, spending my own money, I became more, a more serious comic collector. Um, and then things just sort of went from there, really. Read and wondered what his first comic book that he'd read was about. Ah, well, I don't really remember. Um, I do <laughs> I do remember my grandma taking me to a, a news agent when I was kids and getting like, Hulk and Spider-Man comics. Because the Spider-Man uh, and Hulk both had like live-action TV series when yeah. I was a kid. Um, so I was, I was really into those characters because of that. Finally, we asked if the retro form of paperback medium would still continue into the digital age. It was a concern a few years ago, um, but not so much anymore. It feels like people using digital comics as like a sort of gateway to, to actual physical comics. Okay. So we find more and more people coming through our door who have got into comics through, as well as getting into comics through the movies and TV shows, yeah. but through like digital platforms and being sort of encouraged by that to, to check out the physical form. Next, we looked into retro gaming. We visited Pixel Bar near Millennium Square where we spoke to Jack, the manager there, and asked him how the perception of the hobby has changed. It has become a hell of a lot more acceptable. Um, it is something where, as a gamer, if you were young, you'd get bullied for it or anything else. Mm. It's, you can, you know, you're a nerd, you're a geek or anything else, even if it's board games, Dungeons and Dragons, that kind of all, whole sci-fi adventure kind of culture, whereas now it's hugely accepted and people that even come into this bar uh, they will feel comfortable being in this place. We also wondered if a sense of nostalgia played a big part in the rise of gaming in popular culture. Absolutely, massively. Um, nostalgia for a lot of people uh, coming from, uh, like my, I suppose when I was a kid, um, you had lots of things that you play with that were kind of like toys, like even Pokemon cards yeah. uh, were starting to come around when I was young and now they're trading them for like a grand, two yeah, grand. Oh, yeah. So that whole culture um, is based upon nostalgia where people feel comfortable in expressing themselves and um, having that kind of childhood still be evolved and played upon. Luckily for us, Leeds hosted an event called Collectrabilia over the weekend, a collector's event held at the Marriott Hotel, which focused on both aspects we had been looking into. We asked them all the important questions, like what is retro to them? Retro to me is uh, chasing old dreams that I don't think I'll ever have again in the sense that when you're back in the in the old days when you used to have four like on the n64 and you used to play uh golden eye or f-zero x with four people around and then now we'll never have them type of games again where you have four people connected in the room it's always online you don't have that same connection with your friends so retro um instantly i'm thinking it's history it's me growing up as a child playing on my super nes on my, my old game boy and whatnot. Um, I got into doing retro games through just being a kid going, I used to have this game. Um, so for that, you know, it's, it's good to a special spot in the heart. So yeah, I think a lot of people are coming back to gaming and realising like, whilst new stuff is really fun, it's got like beautiful graphics and like that, there was 
a certain amount of love and sympathy and also a lot of nostalgia for the old school like 8-bit and 16-bit retro games and a lot of when they only had like eight colors to work with and they had to make it fun and engaging and something you want to keep pumping your 50 p's into there's a sort of level of yeah addictiveness and so with our retro pop culture curious is satisfied it's back to you guys in the studio Oh, oh, sorry, the court was getting a bit retro there, getting a bit old school. And we are here with Jack Wokes, who you just saw in the interview. He's the manager of Pixel Bar. And we've just seen the report with you live, but he's here with us now today to talk about all things gaming. So thank you very much for thank coming you, on the yeah. show with us. Uh, my pleasure. It's nice to know that there's a, a big interest in gaming. I'm happy to uh, talk more about it. Exactly. So, yeah. so we're going to start with the all important question on this show. Mm -hmm. What exactly is retro to you? Uh, retro is, uh, it's a difficult term because as time goes on, tech gets quicker and quicker. Mm. So I think the actual margin for retro gets bigger and bigger. Right. It used to be about 20 years prior, but I think it's a little bit more. It's about yeah. 10, 15 years now. Yeah. So yeah. anything from talking original Xbox, PlayStation 2, I would class as almost retro at this point as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah like we, we have retro consoles out at the bar and those are retro consoles, oh, PS2s, love, love Xboxes, N64s as well. But obviously they've gone further back. Yeah. Well, we saw on the film a clip of you talking mm -hmm. about how perception of gamers has changed over time, how it's become more positive. Do you feel that's got a lot to do with how much gaming has become more into the mainstream media for you? TV adaptions and film adaptions and things like that? Yeah, I think it's the whole media based around it. Um, it's something that would get shunned upon if you ever played Dungeons and Dragons when you were young no, or like comics or anything else. If you were a comic collector, you'd be a nerd and kind of put on an outcast, whereas now it's celebrated. Mm -hmm. Like Pokemon cards being as expensive as they are has almost got everybody into it. It's a big mm. catalyst for it uh, in just the pricing. Um, but also in games themselves, that yeah. games are problems that you solve and now they've got to the point of where anybody can sit down play a game and enjoy an experience, much yeah. like reading a book. And that can be anything from mm. something as simple as Mario, running left and right and jumping, <laughs> to something like uh, Horizon Zero Dawn's just come out, or the new one, the Forbidden West. Mm. And that is this uh, massive tale uh, that you're going on. You're literally living in a film. Mm, um, exactly. or Red Dead Redemption 2, notable. Oh, but funny. great cinematic things was actually done by a film crew as well. And yeah. they've got mocap in there. And yeah, all of it just kind of amalgamates together. And all of these cultures have come together to make it more accepting. Oh, so would you say that because obviously the development of the internet and things like this, mm -hmm. so now you've got like YouTube and streamers that they're taking the whole channel to gaming, would you say because of that you have like more children who look up to gaming and look up to it as a profession now rather than just something you do in your free time? I think with the internet, nearly anything has had a, a better capacity to be viewed. Um, and it's something that if you have an experience of viewing it, then there's a better chance that you're going to be in it from when mm. you're younger, younger to older. Yes. Um, so I think that it's... It's definitely had a huge impact upon people wanting to be a part of that community. Mm. Um, and then you've also got bigger tournaments with massive pride pools, but yeah, with like exactly. 10, 20 e million. Yeah, esports yeah. e is such a funny thing. It's uh, just as funded as almost normal sports. Mm. Um, and it has literally become um, a way for people to make mm. money and they can sit and practice and play mm. day in and day out. And it is now a job. Exactly. Now, yeah. going off of the esports mm -hmm. thing, I, I heard a rumor, I don't know how founded in truth it is. I heard on the internet that they're potentially thinking of adding esports to the Olympics as something. I heard it was a rumor. Don't mm -hmm. know if it's true. Now, do you think that is a positive thing for gaming in general? Because obviously there's a lot of things about being with family and things like, could that help generations who don't yeah. necessarily understand the gaming buzz? Bring if it's the community seen on the, yeah, together. On the world stage. Um, I think it would probably have that kind of an impact. More mm. people see it, more people feel like, oh, this is a, a normal thing that people will do. It's not something that, you know, you live in your basement, you collect everything. It's just <laughs> something you actually go out there and it is in the wide, wide world. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't personally say that I put it as an Olympic sport myself. I think it yeah. deserves its own category, much yeah. like you don't put chess down as an Olympic sport. Oh, yeah. It is Definitely. exactly the same as playing a game, turn something turn-based, board mm -hmm. games and video games go hand in hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't have, like, say, Saddles of Catan as an Olympic game. Right. Um, I think... <laughs> Uh, it's something that should have its own category, yeah. definitely, and be a part of this is the best of the best. Brilliant. Well, right. thank you so much for coming yeah, in today. No worries, my It's been pleasure. a pleasure to talk to you. We'll come visit you at Pixel Bar soon enough. Yeah, definitely. Now, while I do love gaming, I'm actually much more of a music fan in my spare time being a part of a band. It seems that even music has gone all retro as well. Even though we've got streaming and downloads these days, one trendy way of listening to music is to use one of these, a record player. 
Yes, well, vinyl records were first produced way back in the 1930s. They have come back in fashion in recent years and are now a popular way of listening. Our cassettes and CDs have died out. So why has this happened? Our reporter Emmy went to go and find out more. Over recent years, records and vinyl hunting have become more of a mainstream hobby. I went to Vinyl Whistle, a record shop in Headingley, to find out more about the recent vinyl revival. Firstly, I wanted to know the impact of lockdown on the record business. Our online presence went through the roof during lockdown. People were spending a lot of money on records. And I think it was a movement away from sort of streaming and things like that. And people sort of had more time to spend listening to records and had more time at home and wanted something to do. So trolling the internet for rare records was something that sort of took off during lockdown again. And since lockdown, people have been coming to the record shops and buying a lot of records. I was curious to see if any genres sold the best. You will have your own kind of records that you listen to. So if you're interested in a certain genre, like after the Disney Channel brought out the um, Beatles documentary, we've sold loads of Beatles records because people have found out a little bit more about them. Maybe the next generation of Beatles fans have come through. And therefore, whenever we get a Beatles record now, that tends to go quite quickly. I was curious to find out if people are currently buying records from the past or both the new releases. Well, all music is um, it comes back. So, for example, that post-punk yard act, all that kind of music at the moment, is exactly the same as Joy Division. It's just coming around again. So it's a bit like fashion. It comes in circles. So everything you're wearing now, people wore a few years ago in the same music. Many see having a physical copy of an album far superior to modern streaming sites. Streaming's fantastic now, but like it's been shown in the courts, you don't own any of that music. So if you spend X amount of money on Apple, as soon as you stop that subscription, yeah. that's gone. Um, so vinyl, if you buy a record, like this one, um, <laughs> it's something to hold. You feel as if you're getting your money's worth. You walk out with a bag with a big record in it, you look at it, you can hold it. Um, and generally records are a little bit more um, sturdy than you see these and things like that. So that's why records are never quite a fashion. It seems that the hobby of record collecting brings people together and provides a sense of community. There's loads of young people that come in here now and buy records, so by that virtue, everyone my age with sons and daughters your age, they've had records in their life, so they're going to go and listen. That's what happens, we get a lot of people coming in with their mums, dads, and doing record shopping together, and you know that you'll be looking for something different to what I'd look for, but I'm sure we could find something here that you would like and I would like, so that's what it's all about. Overall, the spirit of record hunting is here and thriving. This has been Reporter on the Road from Vinyl Whistle Headingley. Oh, hi. <laughs> well, that was a fascinating look at the world of vinyl. And we're staying with a musical theme as we've got the amazing Uvavu jazz band here in the studio with us. Henry's just over there chatting to them now. Over to you, Henry. Right. Well, thank you for coming in today, guys. First and foremost, where did you guys get your name from? Uvavu is from the uh surprise dove from above round on shooting stars and they either say Uranu or Uvavu. <laughs> so he went with Uvavu. Awesome. Yeah. So with so the show being all about sort of retro and vintage and what it is, with the sort of resurgence almost of vinyl coming back into the mainstream, do you guys have any particular thoughts on that or feelings? Yeah, you can connect more than like streaming because you have a physical thing to like mm. To look at you can read a bit about it on the back maybe it's some artwork you know it's more of a package less than just like you press a button and hear a bit of something and then press skip you know what is it about the style of music that you guys play what is it about jazz that you like it's it's more like i think all of us together express the same amount of expression as we want to kind of like appreciate black music mm -hmm. because i think jazz is black mm -hmm. music and giving back and appreciating and mm -hmm. um expressing our own frustrations and you know joys or like mm. hardships through music is essentially well would you, so would you say in the overall grand scheme of like music is what you say jazz is like an important part if you're looking at it through that sort of yeah. idea yeah I, I think if you look at the history like a lot of stuff came out of jazz even stuff that doesn't seem like it like fusion a lot of um a lot of like motown players were jazz musicians you know like it's got a really big history that sometimes doesn't get the credit it deserves with like yeah. Um, some of the struggles of the jazz musicians, like the black musicians of the 30s and 40s mm. and 50s, who 
amazing and some of them died like poor because they never really yeah. got even if they were recognized as being good players they maybe didn't get the respect that um they deserve so i think we're all quite big on like kind of honoring that or being aware of it at least in our playing yeah i'd say that the thing that, about jazz is that it can often be put into this category of being like having a certain sound but really jazz isn't a genre it's more of an idea and a way of a way of um seeing music so i think um like even from the 20s the 30s or 40s every every couple of years there's something new someone else doing their own thing yeah. and then other people listen to it who are interested and like grow so it's it's always expanding it's always different um yeah yeah, say that. Is there a pretty vibrant jazz scene in Leeds for anyone who would want to get into it and watch you watch you guys playing? Or anyone? there's some good venues. I mean, wh which venues would you mention? I'd certainly say um, Cellar Bar and High Park Book Club as well. Mm. And then at, at Broodnell and um, Belgrave, they're putting on jazz in the Domino mm. Club as well. Mm. Um, great places to go watch music, and they get some really like quality acts in that you know are definitely worth going and seeing. Mm -hmm. And then there's the whole free side of it as well. Like at Hyde Park Book Club, you can go for free and watch jazz, like some really good quality players. Um, and then the the jam afterwards, I really appreciate is just a space where people can get up yeah. with not too much pressure to get up and do what you want to do. Awesome. Um, yeah, so it's it's definitely there. If people in Leeds are wanting to get into jazz, just go find it. Well, thank you very much for coming in today, guys. It's back to you, Malika. Thank you, Henry. <laughs> So now we're just going to let the band get into the positions to play us out for the end of the show. What well, Evolve You, a band I really, I really quite like seeing, to be honest with you. When they first came in, I was a little bit, a little bit nervous um, just to speak to them. But honestly, seeing them rehearsing, seeing them coming together and playing, it's a lovely thing to see. Yeah, they're, they're lovely guys. They're really, really nice people. Like, honestly, and also the way they came up with the name as well is brilliant. You can't you can't go wrong with a bit of Vic Reeves and Bob Martin. Right, like, right. The big night out. It's so, it is such a funny like sort of reference to that and talking about like the music scene in Leeds as well like it's really interesting knowing that there is even even what seen as possibly such an old school piece yeah, of music exactly is still such a celebrated environment even right. in our city which yeah. is still just growing and getting bigger and getting even more diverse every day like it's so it's so nice to hear from people who, would, who are who are our age mm -hmm. are finding the way to push forward and get into that scene yeah. like it's such it's quite a reassuring thing because I know there are a lot of people who want to become musicians exactly. out there. So it's and like seeing yourself on the screen. Seeing it is, yourself it is. do something that you've always wanted to do. It's pride. Yeah. There, there, there is a sense of pride to it, being able to go out there and play to people. And Definitely. like seeing them be able to say that there is this piece out of there. Hmm. It's such. It's just such a nice thing to see. Like it's you can really, really, really feel the passion and everything as well. It's a bit hopeful also as well, people. I think. It's, it fills me with hope. I definitely yeah. agree. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So... Thank you, everyone, for watching today. And we'll be back next week with an in-depth look at a yummy range of international food on offer in Leeds. I'm looking forward to that me one. Me too, me too, me too. <laughs> so I'll see you then. And it's over to Evalvu to take it away. Peace and love. Thank <laughs> you.